the implosion of the Titan submersible in June 2023 was a tragedy. And there's a lot to be learned from that. And one of the things that I really wanted to learn more about was the carbon fiber that was used for this submersible and what it's made of, what this actual structure is, how it's different from other submersibles, and what is this whole molecular structure that we're looking at. So me as a chemist, that's what I was interested in. So this journey of mine started out with investigating what are carbon fibers and what are carbon fiber composite materials. C, F, C, M's sometimes called. It's probably other names as well. So I wanted to start out just reminding ourselves where carbon is on the periodic table and that an entire subject matter within chemistry, organic chemistry, revolves around carbon. And part of that is because carbon has four valence electrons, so it can bond to four different atoms around it, and it can also undergo other kinds of bonding where it might only bond to two other things or three other things, depending on what's known as the hybridization. Now, I wanted to first just mention that carbon is also used in steel. So steel is mostly iron, but it can be reinforced by having carbon in it. But that is an entirely different type of bonding. The iron is essentially in three-dimensional arrays. They're stacked all in three dimensions, those atoms of iron. And then there are carbon atoms every so often put in between those iron atoms, and it results in a very strong material. On the other hand, with carbon fibers, we are talking about covalent bonds instead of metallic bonds. And what I had originally thought in terms of carbon fibers is I had assumed that it was more like graphite. Now graphite, I built over here. Let me bring it over. And graphite has carbons that are bonded together in such a way where I am not showing the resonance forms, I'm not showing the double bonds, but rather I'm just showing where the atoms are with respect to each other. And you see that it forms a very ordered structure here with these hexagons. Each one of these black atoms, those are each carbon. And so graphene forms a very flat sheet of these hexagons. And then these can be stacked upon one another which is one of the reasons why graphite is actually quite slippery and soft, that these sheets that are just held together with intermolecular forces, they can slide around, okay? And these bonds are quite strong, all right? And this is a different structure from diamond. I can talk about diamond in a separate video. Now, we can create things such as nanotubes out of graphene structures by taking it and it is flat and just like a piece of paper that we can roll we can actually roll this up and if they bond together as such we can create what's known as a nanotube all right which has very amazing properties So I had originally assumed that carbon fibers were, essentially was another name for graphene or graphite or perhaps even nanotubes that were woven together. But no, I was wrong. And nano 
tubes and these kinds of graphing structures are different in that these are much more ordered. Whereas the carbon fibers, they are woven together strings of carbon. So we still have these carbons and every so often there are some of these hexagons but not in nearly as ordered of a way as we see over there. So these long strings, right now we're just, we're on the atomic level, the molecular level. But if we extrapolate this larger and larger and larger, we can get essentially strings and those can be woven together to form very strong and light carbon fiber materials. So these carbon fibers can then be woven together to create a whole array that looks a lot like something that has been knitted together actually. And once these have been knitted together, it's not unlike sheets of graphene, but on a larger and again, less ordered scale. But I wanted to show this sheet of carbon atoms because there's something about carbon fibers that really isn't mentioned when we just say carbon fiber. And that is the fact that the carbon actually doesn't constitute most of it. That you have to use a resin, paint on a resin, paint on a resin, to give it the shape that you want and the rigidity. These are quite flexible. So it would be like making an airplane out of cloth but if you, have, if you have ever gotten paint on a shirt, it then makes it more rigid, okay? So I decided to just grab some yarn to just imagine if you were painting epoxy or some kind of resin, which is essentially a liquid when you start, if you've ever used epoxy or if you've ever used super glue, it's a liquid when you start and then you let it dry and it creates bonds that are called cross links and then it is much more rigid. So if we were to imagine these are short pieces of molecules that are these uh, this plastic or this epoxy and at first we paint it on and then they begin to bond together and they create longer and longer polymers. And eventually it becomes longer and longer. I have all these pieces of yarn sitting here. Longer and longer pieces. And then you have a whole layer of this epoxy. So let's fast forward and I'm going to pull in something that my mom knitted. And this could now be our epoxy, right? And essentially, if you paint both sides of it with the epoxy, you end up getting this carbon fiber that is surrounded by this rigid layer on each side. Okay. Now, I did want to mention that carbon fibers, they don't readily bond to other things. And they wouldn't necessarily readily bond to this polymer. And so there does need to be, um, and a lot of companies I have heard, they keep it proprietary, what they use, but there are these binding agents that then allow the epoxy or the resin, whatever the, this material you're using, it's essentially a polymer, to get it to bond to the 
the carbon fiber that's inside. That then allows this to harden and the carbon fiber that's inside of it to be bonded to it and it is then surrounded by this whole, essentially a layer of polymer. And then we've got our carbon fiber and then more polymer. So think of the carbon fiber as the rebar in concrete and think of our hard polymer on each side as the concrete itself. So this reinforces it significantly. This carbon fiber reinforces the plastic, the polymer, the resin significantly, making it much more strong, durable, and in terms of its ability to be strong and lightweight, it's hard to be carbon. Okay. So here is here my <laughs> by using the molecular model kit. Thank you, Mega Molecules, by the way. Um, the model kit and a little bit of yarn. Here is my description of carbon fiber composite material that the Titan used on its hull. I also wanted to mention that the structure from my, my reading, which entails talking with expert engineers who knows a lot about composite materials and aerospace engineering and gaining understanding from them, plus my knowledge of chemistry, and some more research that I have done in terms of submersibles, is that having a structure that is a cylindrical shape is not as strong I'm, gonna, I'm going to make my nanotube here again. It's not as strong. So this is more like the, the Titan. Okay, we have our cylinder. It's not as strong as a sphere. So let me get you a sphere. And this is actually known as a buckyball. It is C60, or 60 carbons in a sphere. This was originally, the structure of carbon was discovered in space, but we now know that it also exists on Earth and can be synthesized and is now being investigated for all sorts of uses. But my point here has more to do with engineering than it does with molecular structure in this moment. And that is a submersible that is spherical. When you put pressure on it, the pressure is coming from all sides. And this spherical structure is much stronger and can withstand those enormous undersea pressures much better than something like the Titan that is a sphere where once again, you've got these pressures coming in. And in terms of implosion, it is more susceptible for this and other reasons. Okay, this is just one of them. And again, I am not an engineer, but this comes from speaking with engineer and investigating engineering uh, websites and publications. All right, so there was a combination of some of the chemical aspects of carbon fibers in the context of the Titan submersible, as well as some of the engineering that I found to be interesting. So hopefully there are more safety protocols in the future. Hopefully there is more testing done and hopefully there is more exploration on the uses of carbon fibers. They are used a lot, very successfully, 
in aerospace applications, aeronautical, and actually in um, many other not as sexy but more everyday life types of structures as well. And uh, that includes things like SUPs and um, just fun things that um, people might have. They're so lightweight and strong. So you could probably imagine a lot of good uses for carbon fibers. Thank you for joining me in this video today. Always, always let me know if you have requests for anything that needs chemistry and feel free to subscribe if you're finding value <laughs> in my videos and uh, I really enjoy doing this for you. So thank you all of you who are in here in this community and enjoying ASMR chemistry and I'll see you next time in the next video.